Hi guys, uh, welcome again. Today, it's Sunday, it's raining, so I'm going to make something for myself for a change. Um, I'm going to make a decoration for the back fence. So, I was sketching last night, and this is what we've got so far. So obviously, usual with most of my videos, start soften in a spire. So, create a new file, top left, here. Obviously that's the dimensions of the metal, so I'll keep it within 10mm, just to double make sure we don't we don't go over in case I mess up. Your thickness, because this is for a router, um, doesn't make no difference because we're using plasma, so we click OK. So we'll just import what I sketched last night, which is going to be this here. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. Now, what I did with this is I is I just got various pictures off the internet um, and imported them in, just just images, and just basically traced traced them out because I, I basically using Adobe Illustrator less and less really because of the amount of nodes it imports into the work, which is just for me not as smooth when it's cutting loads of detail bends. So what I would do pretty much is go through each little curve and bend I'll show you so if we zoom in example for this bit here it highlights straight away the part that you wish to edit and you can as you can see there's a lot of less nodes there there's thousands uh, on a DXF so you can delete them uh, pretty much I get rid of all the black nodes which are basically tight corners and I make them all smooth and that way it just looks for me a far far better cut so that's how I go that's how I go about and to give let me just click on that one so once we've got them all like that um, now if any if any of you want an instruction video on how this Vectric works and how I do it just on Vectric. I can do this on the other PC if you want with a screen recorder to show you exactly in detail. But I take it you guys that use CNC before will probably know how this works. So the beauty with Vectric, what you can do is you can test it before you ruin it on the CNC. So what I can do is we can highlight vectors. Now this is what you'd use for cutting out with a wood. So what I would do Let's click it now this cut depth it doesn't matter with CNC you can make it 14 mil 15 mil but if I'm doing wood then obviously if it's a 6 mil ply then I'll make it 6.2 so basically you're not cutting so much in the in the cutting board um, doesn't matter about climb cut obviously plasma it doesn't matter edit passes for this one doesn't really matter um, we just want to see what it's going to look like what does matter what you can do is this end mill here now what you can if you edit now as you can see the diameter is your two mil now i know for the fact that the cuff on my 30 amp plasma plasma cutter 0.8 of a tip is not 0.9 so not 0.9 if i'm cutting 100 mil will give me 100.008 i think it is quite quite accurate now again the end mill will show you what it would be like with an end mill so if you're doing mega tight curves, if you, I generally set that as my cuff width. So it'll give you an idea if you're cutting into the other part or not. So it's it's ideal, real electric for this. So if we click on, leave it at 2 mil. So if we calculate, that's telling me that obviously we're going to cut through. Well, we know that. And that's what it'll, that's what it'll sort out. So if we then quickly uh, play this, this is what it'll look like in wood. Now, and then quickly then, you can delete away. Um, let me have a look. Cut it side out. Cut that out. Cut that out. And cut that out. And there you go. So it gives you an idea on what the thing is going to look like before you start cutting out metal. Uh, obviously, you can change your background. Um, so it's, it's, it's a nice bit of software. And obviously, from here then, what we'll do, I'm happy with that which I've done before so we can obviously select we can just group everything easy enough to drag everything group objects with solid density you can move everything around 
So basically, I, again, I'll always export. No export, you've got DXF, SVG. I always use F SVG. DXF obviously will put all the black nodes back uh, in your route or messing around. You've got to then convert it to Bezier curves and everything else. And then once you do that, we are left with this file here. And as you, again, you guys know from here, we're straight into sheet cam. Again, I'll show you the tools in another video if anyone wants to ask. Click file, import drawing, new garden bird. That again is showing me on the sheet where the CNC will start cut from. And there we go. So all the yellow is the inside path, all the red is on the outside path. So in order to put everything on an inside, we obviously need to I create like different layers so you know which is obviously the contour button so click on this one you know this turn right right click move to layer new layer call it inside cut so straight away one red so it's not many it's quite, it's quite an easy one to do so I'll stick that one inside cut on that one his eyes an inside cut this is an inside cut and that's an inside cut there we go move to layer new layer again outside cut and there we go guys done shows outside cut so then we pick our tool operations which is not that one get off so it just gives you an example here, whether you choose an outside inside cut. So I always choose it inside first because I wanted to cut inside. Cut outside first, you'll cut the outside out and then the middle drops out in some parts. So always inside first. Inside to inside. Again, my tools preset, I've already done those. Um, my path wheels I always have is holes and corners. I think it's 60% on tight curves, uh, tight corners. And I on reverse cut. For some reason, I don't know why that is. You, you go cut. You, you technically your work should always be on the right hand side because of the swirling. What I, what, what they say. Um, thinner stuff, I don't notice any difference. Thicker stuff, I do. Um, so obviously, your outside cut generally should be clockwise. Inside cut anti-clockwise. That's all I've always worked. You can loop sharp corners, triangle arcs. I don't, I don't bother with that. Not needed on this one. So holes and corners. So we click OK. So there we go, it gives us all our start points. Then we want outside offset, outside cut. Again, pretty much the same. Um, this this see a lead in and lead out. Basically, um, you don't want it to pierce because you've got the pierce height, then obviously your plasma comes down to start cutting. If you don't get that right and you're piercing near the line, you're then going to get a blowout like a hole. Now, example what you can do to make sure if it's a paying customer and the part has got to be bang on the money I might even use lead in four mil so which means that if we see in the cursor here it's, it's basically arcs now 1.8 mil not so bad I can pretty much grind that off if it's for myself you pretty much not notice but you can actually start from here so the plasma will cut right in then join and then as it finishes it'll join back out so it, it, it's perfect that's what that does so that's that and that's it guys that's sheet cam um, and then from there we then look green icon at the top we click it for G chord and into desktop so we can actually close that down now Yeah, always does that crap with this new update. Um, and then this this is the G code. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the G code we then put into Mac 3. So let's just get everything into Mac 3, and I'm going to show you how we zero into Mac 3 on this video. Be back soon. Right, guys, uh, back on Mac 3. This is this is how I go about setting it up. Um, so what I'll attempt to do. Obviously, just see all them for the start anyway. Um, now, if you show what I'll do on the metal part. So, with the handset, 
I will quickly move it in position. To pretty much where where I where I feel that it, it's good enough for me. Now at this point, it doesn't matter about the z-axis because um, I'm going to show you why. We go back on here. Now what I'll do is I can zero all the x and y because I know where that I know where they are. So if I load my then if I hit reference home, sorry. Now. I'll move it round and I'll show you what the torch what the torch does uh, with the floating head. So if we quickly have a look at the floating head part, on that. Now, if I do reference home, so as you can see, it will go down, it'll touch, and then basically uh, it will tend to come up and it will cut off. Now if we have a look back on here we can then now zero everything out. Now it's what the torch head control does is on every single cut it goes down it will, it will touch the metal and lift up. Um, I have it set at 1.5 with a jacket cut 45. Obviously the thicker metal you need to work that out but like I said on my previous videos the tools that are set up on my sheet cam all that takes into that consideration and you can edit um, all the code in there to which you, which you feel right which which is a lot of work uh, messing around every cut but obviously once you get it right pick your metal and you know which tool you like so like I say you'll see it lift and rise on every cut like we said before people use auto high torch control yeah that's great for some I could have fit it but needless because with a water table that's that's obviously on here, uh, I have it filled not to the top, uh, but probably half inch off the top. Now I cut 0.8 steel up to about a meter by meter. Can do here. I can do intricate shapes, tiny tiny key rings, and I don't get any warp. Um, so at this stage, torch eye control is meaningless on everything that I've made. If it comes apparent later on. Then I'll fit it, no, no biggie. But I can't see the point for me of having that with this and the water table. And obviously, also you'll notice as well, tiny work shed. Yeah, I'll leave the door open, but the water bed catches a lot of fumes um, and a lot of sparks. So, so from that, so, so obviously from everything else that's back to zero now, we can file, load G code. Uh, the garden file and it will call the cut up and there we go guys that's what it will be doing now obviously I've not got two cameras set up because I'm gonna put the camera behind the plasma like I always do here so you can obviously watch it cut but obviously you'll see the axis will move in the, in the top right hand side and that's it guys all the feed rate is not needed because that's what I would use, obviously the wood router. I'm going to do a few of them. I've got a few few jobs coming up that they want wood items cut out. So all as I do is I just leave the table, water table intact, and I'll put a six mil piece of ply, level it on top, and then that's that's my cutting board. And again, pretty accurate. So let's just get set up, put the camera behind, and uh, we'll hit start.
nice. Lift that out. lift straight out so we'll we'll just spray that and I'll show you what it looks like when it's uh, when it's all done right guys um, that's just that's the finish with it now I'm not gonna spray this I'm not gonna spray this black because um, I've cleaned it up with kind of really really fine flat disc so basically when that's clear coated uh, depending on which way the Sun is um, it will shine and that's and that's it from start to finish so another thing for the fence thanks for watching